Hello and welcome to Islamophobia Watch. I'm George, your host, and I'm delighted you've tuned in. I do see that we have a good amount of listeners who are continue to download the content, and this is very encouraging. I am getting ready here to release new content on a more regular basis, so keep coming back and keep checking the podcast out, as well as our website, islamophobia.watch where we try to document um, cases of hoax, the the Islamophobia hoax that's being perpetrated on the free world. And what this means to us, um, I've come to believe that it's not expertise that we lack, it's courage that we lack. So if, if I lack expertise, whether it's in the way this show is produced or the way the website is or anything of that nature... I'm okay with that. I don't claim to have the full uh, range of expertises needed to operate necessarily some uh, amazing website or podcast. What I don't lack is courage. And so if you have an expertise, and whether it's the website design or, or uh, podcasting or, or anything like that, if you have an expertise you would like to put to work, um, and to support this uh, cause, uh, sh- give me a shout out and I will connect with you so we can put your skills to use. What I don't lack is courage, and it takes courage to forge ahead and attack the enemy. And the enemy that needs to be attacked here is the lie of the red green axis, the communist, the global communist left. And the global jihad, this this wicked alliance of totalitarianism is what it is, waging war on traditional values, waging war on the West, waging war on the American Republic, on the Western civilization as we know it. That's where the battle is. Um, historically, this type of conflict has never been resolved through peaceful means and diplomacy. Um, It looks like from history, it always boils down to an armed conflict. Maybe, just maybe, if we do our job well, if we continue to educate people as to what Islam is all about and what the Islamic agenda and the globalist, communist, jihadist alliance is working on and what they're doing, maybe we can wake up enough people who will go then to the leadership, uh, their churches and pastors and rabbis and priests, their legislators, and uh, basically demand of them to stand against this wickedness and to restore justice in a public square. Because as much as the left talks about justice, what they do is they just use the language to actually impose injustice, to bully us into submission. This is what the left and this is what Islam is about, bullying people into submission. And if they can't bully you through uh, their rhetoric and their lies, they will bully you through the power of the sword, as they have done through history. Now, in today's episode, we talk about uh, something very specific, and that is the shamelessness of the global jihad and the global left, shamelessness that has manifested itself uh, in a pretty blatant way. Uh, specifically, I'm referring to an incident and to a uh, another travesty that can be seen on the official website of the British government back in July 23rd, and I'm sure there are plenty other examples, but this is the one I'm just going to um, highlight here on this episode. On July 23rd, 2019, in an official press release, the UK government announced that it, uh, it has appointed an independent expert, an independent expert appointed by the UK government to tackle the problem of Islamophobia. This so-called independent advisor has been appointed to provide expert advice on, hold on to your chairs, creating a definition of Islamophobia to the UK 
government. Sure, he is independent. Yeah, he definitely looks like one. The guy looks basically like an imam, okay? He looks like an imam, and he is an imam. Imam Kari Asim MBE, whatever that means. He's the deputy chair of the anti-Muslim hatred working group. Usually, these are fake groups that are created to siphon funds from the government. Um, and so, or launder, basically they're laundry operations for jihad. Uh, but this guy, okay, I haven't done research on him, but it's like 99% of these people are operators of the Muslim Brotherhood. So you can just, you can bet any amount of money that this is what the, the case here as well. They're not going to, they're not going to put some, uh, you know, wide-eyed uh, youth in that position. This guy is an experienced operator of the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, and he has now been appointed by the UK government to lead a process for establishing a definition of Islamophobia. Imagine this, the guy is going to be going to work every day establishing a process of definition um, uh, of Islamophobia. He will be joined by a second advisor, the press release says. And by the way, you can um, follow the links in the podcast and go to our Patreon um, and uh, our Patreon website where you can look up the post named uh, Shameless. And that's where all the, all the notes are and that's where all the links are. Uh, so this imam is going to lead a process. He's going to lead a process whatever that means, for establishing a definition of Islamophobia. We'll talk about this a little bit later. So let's just keep going. He'll be joined by a second advisor. We don't know who that is. Another jihadi will be confirmed in due course. Uh, so what's wrong with this picture, you might say? Well, is there a single thing that isn't wrong here? Uh, not according to the brain-dead government zombies uh, who produce travesties like this. They see nothing wrong with this, right? They see nothing wrong with setting up a mullah who is demonstratively dressed as a mullah in charge of an actual government agency solving a totally fake problem that doesn't even have a definition. It doesn't have a definition. This is how stupid these people are. And they should be fired immediately as incompetent or there's another explanation. Maybe they're just totally shameless. Uh, maybe the people who appoint people like that and create offices like that aren't just incompetent. Uh, maybe they're incompetent in, in, you know, in a normal way, like they can't even get another job. They can't really get anything done, so they, they got a government job, right? So the, they, they may be incompetent in that way, but they're crafty and shameless, so they're not, they're very competent when it comes to being crafty and shameless and, 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 and wicked. I think that's the case here. These leftist utopians who have taken over the government institution of Western countries, um, they are indeed uh, extremely dumb and incompetent, but uh, that's not why they're appointing these imams and these mullahs in charge of these fake institutions. They know exactly what they're doing. They know full well that they're destroying the Judeo-Christian civilization that stands in the way of communism. And communism today operates as globalism. That's what these people are doing, except now communism has incorporated corporatism. So now we have corporations that are on board with the communist agenda. Quite interesting. In fact, these people... Uh, the left, the globalist left, is obsessed so much with achieving their goal of destroying the Judeo-Christian civilization uh, that they'll use any ally, including the jihadi, uh, the global jihad, which they despise and hate anyway. They hate each other. At the end of the day, they do hate each other, and they end up killing each other or trying to kill each other. And we, we know that's true from history as well. When communism takes over, it's going to try to slaughter the Muslims. Uh, or, or it will enter into look at Putin. Putin is buddies with um, these terrorist mullahs, right? Uh, if he can't kill him, he'll create an ally. And I mean, that's how these people work, right? So we now have this: the UK government appointing some Muslim Brotherhood jihadi calling him independent. This is how stupid they think we are. And this is the exact same thing that's going on here in the United States. This is no different. The reason I'm using this is it's because just 
It's so blatant and at such a level. But um, same thing is going on in the U.S. And the and examples are a lot. There are many. Okay. Um, so we have now the Minister of Islamophobia. The Minister of Islamophobia. The official U.K. government Minister of Islamophobia. Is that what we should call him? Right? And what is he working on? Why is he getting paid? To work on a definition of Islamophobia. Are you kidding me? Okay. He's going to appoint himself an assistant or maybe 10, you know, bring all his aunts and uncles and, 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 and uh, cousins, you know, probably already 50 people have been appointed by this guy to be, to be uh, secretaries and, and clean the, his office and, and who knows, who knows what, that's what they, that's what these people do. Chain migration. Okay. They know how to rob and steal and siphon government funds, taxpayers' money. That's what that's that's the whole game. Okay. So we have now this Minister of Islamophobia. He's gonna appoint himself an assistant, right? And they'll work on getting getting generating a definition of Islamophobia for the UK government to use. Wow, incredible. Okay. Now here's a problem. This term Islamophobia has been used in the past only once or twice or so way back in like in the 1920s or 1930s by, I believe, like a French uh, journalist uh, once or twice. I mean, you know, it's just a curious fact that this term was used uh, by some unknown European intellectuals or journalists uh, in unknown publications. So it really wasn't anything that was widespread as far as like, what is Islamophobia? No one really knew this. It was just some kind of fancy word that was um, used by some French journalist or reporter. But it was first introduced in the public, to the public square by um, a, a, a UK organization, Runnymede Trust. In 1991, they produced the uh, report. And in this report, you can also have uh, follow the link here on the uh, post that we have on, uh, on Patreon. Okay. And you could go to the actual uh, PDF that shows you that original publication where they have this uh, sophisticated schematic that shows you the problem of Islamophobia. It's all racism and this and that and the other. So they've been chewing on this and they've been they've been looking for this definition since 1991. You know, it's like 20 years later, they still don't have a definition. I mean, what is wrong with these people? Uh, it, it's absolutely crazy. Um, so, um, 30, uh, 30 years later, almost 30 years later, these people still don't have a definition. This alone shows you how crazy and how um, absolutely bogus this whole thing is. 30 years later, they're still appointing bogus ministers of Islamophobia to create a definition of Islamophobia. There is no such thing. It's a hoax. It's a hoax. They've been trying to to provide a definition. Islamophobia is fear of Muslims. Then they changed that because they realized that doesn't really work. So they changed it and they said, oh, no, no, Islamophobia is racism, really. It's racism. Well, who's the race? The Muslim race? There's no such thing. It's so illogical. It's so dumb. It's so fake. It's absolutely unbelievable. So now they're going to have a, a mullah in the UK government flexing his Islamic muscles to uh, brainwash us and to beat our brains into believing that there's a problem called Islamophobia and he's going to produce a definition. I'm sure he hasn't done anything about it. I haven't even had time to look at it, but... These um, lazy assholes usually are just absolutely not productive. They don't do anything. They're just there to get some money. This whole thing uh, reveals to us, it reveals to us what we're dealing with. We're dealing with extremely, with shameless people. They're dumb as far as not, not being able to even get any other normal job. So that's why they work at the government, of course, right? Um, they're dumb. But they're crafty. They're shameless. That's who we're dealing with. This whole thing reveals exactly why 
uh, this this whole thing is happening. We're losing our freedoms because shameless people, absolutely shameless people, are using Islamophobia as a tool of censorship to shut us up, and we're just putting up with it. We're putting up with it. I don't know if it's the laziness or the cowardice of the intellectual right when it comes to allowing this travesty to go on and challenge in the public arena. This hoax could have and should have been exposed for what it is long time ago. It should have never been allowed to grow legs and to mutate into today's censorship monster that it is. But friends, it's not too late. It's never too late to blow up the false narrative of this shameless pathological red-green axis. It's upon us to get the job done. Until we get our act together and expose this travesty, they will continue to perpetrate their hoax on society with impunity. Why? See, all of us rational people always have to think there has to be a reason. We have to have a rational explanation. But when you're dealing with irrational people, you have to set aside your rational ways of thinking and you have to understand and accept what the crazies are doing. Otherwise, you'll never win. You'll never win. Why are they doing this? It's very simple. They're pathologically shameless. The correct term, in fact, is psychopaths. There, I said it. These people are psychopaths. There's psychopathology involved here. They see they, there's nothing. They don't register. If you go to tell them right now, hey, do you know that Muslims kill like 100,000 Christians every year? Every year, 100,000 Christians are being butchered by Muslims. And if you go to this imam or you go to any of these lefties and you tell them that, they'll just give you, they'll just blink and look at you and then it's like nothing. It's like you said nothing to them. I've done it. I've done it. They're shameless. It doesn't register. They don't care. This means that when you're dealing with people like that, you just have to determine to defeat them. They'll never understand anything. They'll just have to be defeated. They'll have to be defeated by the power of our arguments. They'll have to be defeated in the arena of public policy. They'll have to be defeated with the, with the uh, facts that we have. They'll have to be defeated through media and emotionally charged materials that show the, the, the regular, the normal people who we're dealing with and what we're dealing with. But they will never understand it. So you just have to make a decision. You're going to fight them and you're going to win over or you're going to win them, uh, not no, win them over, but you're going to win over them. Okay, um, so we're going to fight or not? I think we should fight because we haven't really given this a shot. We haven't really pushed back hard enough. Um, I'm intending on ramping things up with Islamophobia Watch. Uh, I know people in the UK who are doing the same on their end. I know some people have said that the UK is lost and Europe is lost and, you know, we should not even try and waste our time. I don't believe that. If that's true, uh, why are the jihadis still fighting us, right? Why are they still fighting us? They should be waving their ISIS flag now over uh, our institutions in Brussels and, and, and that's not happening, right? So we have to correctly assess uh, the situation and make a decision that we're not giving up and that we have yet to fight and also to admit that we failed in the last 30 years to deal specifically with this tool that has created such a stigma, the Islamophobic hoax and stigma. They're using this tool to shut us up, to shame us and to advance their agenda. It's very clear. You can't criticize Islam, you can't say anything, you can't do anything because they shut you up and they cast you as a bigot. And basically what has to happen is we have to say, you know, I don't care. I don't care if you think I'm a bigot. That's fine. That's up to you. But you know what? I call bull, right? We have to absolutely grow thick skin and give up this whole obsession with tolerance and looking nice and sounding nice. There's no time for this. Rome is burning, Right. Rome is burning, uh, literally burning. Minneapolis was burning in front of our very eyes here a few months ago uh, as, as the lunatic, violent left BLM and Antifa and their buddies from the jihadi, Somali jihadi complex burning down the city. And you think I'll be worried about looking politically correct or tolerant in the eyes of who? The jihadis? The jihadis will determine if I'm tolerant or not. I say bull, right? No, not happening. It's not happening. 
it's us or them. That's how this, that's how this will go down. And uh, I'm going to do what I have to do for us to win, uh, for God, for our children, grandchildren, for this generation. We owe it to ourselves and we owe it to those who have been before us, who've died before us, who've given their lives for us to have freedom and liberty. We owe it to them as well. So, fellow Islamophobes, thank you for your support. Islamophobia.watch is our website. Uh, share the podcast if you like it with others. Send us some resources, information. Uh, if you know somebody who wants to be interviewed, uh, who can provide interesting insight into this issue, let me know. But we have to spread this. This is a, Much of this is information warfare. So we have to spread as much correct information exposing this Islamophobia ho hoax as possible. The situation is about to become worse in the world, which means we will have to fight even harder. Thank you.